Hi everyone, it's Coach Fred, and so I'm sitting here working on exponential functions again, video three. This time we're gonna be translating them, and while I could show you the same way we've been translating functions by writing a function rule for the changes, I actually find these to be easier without doing that. So I like the quick way. Now, I'm gonna show you just the translated way so you can under, kind of understand why I like this way better, but um, you need a parent graph, and unfortunately, y equals a b to the x is the parent, and there's no numbers associated with it. So you need a b to have a parent. So y equals b to the x will always be the one that would be the parent. So in this case, it would be like y equals 2 to the x. So based on that parent, this would be moving to the left 2. It would have a vertical stretch of 3. vertical stretch of three, and it would be moving up one. Okay, now that up one's important because that's gonna move my asymptote up one. So think of it of th like this. This is of the form y equals a b to the x plus h, um, you know, plus k. x actually, x minus h plus k. So it's always going to be the opposite on the inside. So the inside is going to be up in that exponent, and this is going to be on the outside, so moving it up and down. So you could certainly write a rule, get your points on the parent graph, um, and then you know shift it. So this would be inside changes x, so it would be x minus 2, and then 3y plus 1. So the rule would be x minus 2, 3y plus 1. You could certainly do that. For me, I actually just like to plot points. <laughs> So I make a table because I don't need that many points. I do want to know that the graph is being shifted up one. So I'm going to put in my vertical or my horizontal asymptote at y equals one. And so I know because there's no reflection that this graph is going to be opening up. So that would be y equals one is my asymptote. All right, my points, I'm just going to pick nice, easy points. I'd love for this to be zero. So in order for that to be zero, so I'd get two to the zero, I'd need x to be negative two. So I'm gonna put in negative two. If I do that, negative two, I get three times two to the zero plus one. Two to the zero is one, one times three is three, three plus one is four. So I have negative two, four. All right, I do wanna see like, you know, maybe a number like negative one. What happens when I get negative one? If I put in negative one, I'm gonna get negative one plus two, which is one. So that's gonna give me three times two to the one plus one. So six plus one, which is seven. So I can plot those points. Negative two, four, one, two, three, four. Negative one, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, we do want our y-intercept, so we are gonna let x be zero. If x is zero, we get three times 2 to the 2 plus 1, so 4 times 3 is 12, plus 1 is 13. So 0, 13 is that point. So plugging in points, I actually find, so it's up here somewhere, I fa find to be easier for these. Um, three points is totally enough. I even would accept two points. Um, it's still a growth function because b is greater than 1. My domain, again, remember, it doesn't change negative infinity to infinity. But my range now relates to my asymptote. So now the graph isn't going to reach 1. So that would be then from 1 to infinity. And remember, range are your y values. Okay? All right. So um, what would be another way to write this function? So I mentioned that in an earlier video. So you might remember in, the, in video 1, the graphs were really easy. You could see the y-intercept immediately. Um, when it was just a, in the form y equals a b to the x. Well, now I've got a shift, so I can't really see the y-intercept so easily. The laws of exponents told me that 2 to the x plus 2, another way to write that would be 2 to the x times 2 to the 2, because remember, power to a power, add them high. All right, so here's, think about that. I have now 3 times 2 to the x times 2 to the 2 plus 1. Multiplication says that I can kind of reorder this. So this would be 3, 2 squared, which is 4, 4 times 3, which is 12. Okay? 
So I could write the function, this function is exactly the same as this function. Okay, now the thing about it is you'd love 12 to be the, the y-intercept, but again, this graph was shifted up one. And so I'd have to shift 12 up one, which would put me at my y-intercept of 13. So I just want you to be able to co confidently move with the exponents and play around with the functions so you can see different ways to write them. They're equivalent equations, okay? All right, let's try one more. So here we've got three to the one half, okay? So we know it's decay. All right, so again, if my parent graph is y equals one half to the x, then this graph is moving to the left two vertical stretch of three and up one. So I, I left the points, I left everything the same. Okay, so here we go. Remember, decay means it's gonna be falling from left to right. I'm gonna make a table. Okay, again, putting a negative two in is a really nice function there. So negative two plus two gives me zero. One half to the zero is one. So three plus one is four. Okay, now I really wanna think this through because if I put in negative one, I'm gonna get a power of one. I actually want it to be one half to the negative one so that I can flip it and make it positive. So to get negative one, I'd actually have to put in negative three to the function. Again, you can use any points. I'm trying to make it a little bit easier for us, okay? So if I put in negative three, I'll get three times one half to the negative one plus one. That would give me uh, three times two plus one, so seven, okay? I do want my y-intercept, so zero. Um, that's gonna give me three times one half squared plus one. So that's gonna be one fourth. So three times one fourth plus one, which would be three fourths plus one, which would be one and three fourths or 1.75, okay? All right, so I've got my zero, 1.75. So negative two, four, one, two, three, four. Negative three, seven, three, let's see, one, two, three, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then zero, 1.75, so right about there, and there's my decay function. My equation of my asymptote, remember that k was moved up one, so y equals zero moves up to y equals one. My domain has no restrictions, and my range relates to my equation of my asymptote, so zero to infinity. Um, okay, what's another way we could write this function? I suggest you try it. Try it, and then let's come back and see if you've got it. All right, so it would have been three times one half to the x times one half to the two. Just working backwards. Remember, we keep talking about this idea of working backwards, plus one. Okay, one half to the two is one, uh, is one fourth. So three times one half to the x times one fourth plus one, so that would give me, if I combine these guys, that would give me three-fourths times one-half to the x plus one. Okay, so my y-intercept, not three-fourths, because I'd have to add one to it, so one and three-fourths, okay? Um, so hopefully you got that right, and that would be the alternate or equivalent function. All right, guys, that's it for today. Um, hopefully that was helpful. We're going to check it out tomorrow to see how well you did. Have a great day.